Tarantulas with Shanti here. I am here today to talk to you about breeding Cereocosmus elegans. The key topics that I'm going to talk about today are habitat, breeding behavior, producing a sac, incubation, slings, and breeding mishaps. So the habitat of Cereocosmus elegans, they are found only in Trinidad, Tobago, and Venezuela. The climate here has high temperatures and high humidity. This is a tropical rainforest habitat. So Cereocosmus elegans thrives in a moist terrarium that is kept warm. Now for breeding purposes, this may be somewhere around 80 degrees. Cereocosmus elegans would do well in an enclosure with live plants and deep substrate. C. elegans will create a burrow beneath a piece of bark or down in the substrate and then lay a fine layer of silk. This will be used to not only detect prey, but to make it easier for the tarantula to walk around its burrow entrance. So as far as breeding behavior is concerned, the male C. elegans uses drumming behavior uh, he uses his enlarged pedipalps, which look like the first two pairs of legs, but they are pedipalps, indeed they're not legs. And he will signal to the female by tapping and also vibrating his body. And at this point, she may come out of her burrow and tap back, which is a signal to him that it's okay to go ahead with the breeding. The male will take his two long front legs that have the tibial hooks. If you look closely, you'll see a little hook and he will insert those up under her fangs and hold her body up so that he can take his pedipalps and they have a little tiny hooks on them. They're little pockets where he keeps his sperm after weaving a sperm web and he will insert this into the female, into her cloaca and then that's where the fertilization occurs. And then once he has completed the mating, he will usually back away and try to escape. Sometimes um, in rare circumstances, he may be grabbed and consumed and she may try to eat him. So it's good to give him a lot of space so that he can get out of there. So the next step, if conditions are right, would be producing a sack. Uh, the right temperature, moisture, uh, and if the female is not due to molt, then within about 30 days she will produce a sac, and hopefully she won't eat it. This happens, sometimes we don't know why. Conditions could be wrong, or uh, maybe she's getting ready to molt, or maybe the sac is just not good. So that can happen. Um, so then, um, it could be anywhere from 30 to 40 days. Now the best conditions for producing a sac would be in their natural habitat. It is the beginning of the dry season. Now I think there's been a lot of confusion about this in the hobby, that the beginning of the dry season means keep them dry. But actually, the beginning of the dry season in the wild is actually the wettest time of the year because everything has just been saturated with moisture. So it's warm and it's very moist and it's the very beginning of the dry season. So this is when the humidity is the highest because it's becoming drier and so everything's heating up and all of that moisture is evaporating from the earth. You would want to keep a corner of the enclosure moist so that the female has a sense that it is it is still just the beginning of the dry season and it is still wet out. So after about 30 to 40 days when the female lays a sac, um, you would just keep an eye on it and you can remove it from her about three weeks after it's laid and do that very carefully and you put that into a homemade incubator and that will consist of a coffee filter that you've placed inside of a small deli cup and that deli cup will have holes in the bottom of it. You could use a syringe to make tiny, tiny holes. You will put the coffee filter inside of that deli cup. Then you'll take that deli cup and place it inside of a larger deli cup. And that larger deli cup will help be filled with uh, purified water, spring water, almost to the bottom 
of your smaller deli cup. So you want that water to evaporate and keep the, the um, they should be eggs with legs at this point almost, and you want to keep the moisture and humidity up for those slings to develop properly. Now, um, so it would be around that time they will be eggs with legs, and you would want to go through that egg sac and remove any uh, eggs that are black or turning, you know, and, and get them out of there so they don't infect the rest of the healthy eggs. Your eggs should be a nice cream color, and the little ones with legs on them, you can tell when they're healthy and when they're not. You don't want any mold spreading. You may end up with anywhere from 50 to 120 slings uh, produced from a successful pairing. There will be a mortality rate of some sort. Usually people do lose some. You know, you could lose 20, you could use, lose half of them, um, and there could be a variety of reasons for that. One of the number one reasons would be the conditions are not kept right. So if they dry out or it's, it's too wet for them or they sometimes are dropped. I've heard of that happening. And then there's just other things that are beyond your control. You know, bad molts, you know, there's just something genetically with that particular spiderling that it doesn't make it. After they've molted a couple times, you'll be able to tell when they're ready to take prey because they will look like actual tiny spiders, little tarantulas. And at this time you can give them pre-kill or you can offer them some flightless fruit flies. You just want to make sure that the prey is not large, that it's, you know, it's not still alive and able to damage them. So if it is something bigger, bigger pieces, you may want to cut it up and make sure it's pre-kill and let them suck on the juices from that. Accidents do happen during breeding. I mean, they happen to even the most um, conscientious breeder. So um, let's go ahead and go over a video that I have of a breeding that went wrong and I will discuss uh, what happened here, what possibly I could have done differently, uh, and we will go from there. I am about to pair this little C. elegans. He's a little tiny male, so tiny. And uh, this male belongs to my friend, Shane, and I have a female that I'm gonna pair him with, so, uh, let me get everything set up and we will get started. Let's just wish the little guy some luck. Have him in a catch cup here. All right, he's in. He's already vibrating. This little guy's been waiting because she had to molt first. At this point, the little male was searching around for her burrow entrance. He was doing a little bit of vibrating and looking for a way in. I didn't have any reason to feel nervous about it. I also did not see the female. I didn't see any evidence of her legs coming out. I had bred Cereocosmus leetsi uh, without any consequence whatsoever. They had remained together for three hours on two occasions, and so I did make an assumption that the C. elegans breeding would go in a similar manner to the C. Litsi. Now, here's the little guy poking his head down into the burrow, and I had to check to see if she was also uh, coming up and meeting him in the other end but I did not see her. Now looking back on this, there are definitely some things that I could have done differently. Because I trusted her so much, I was holding my camera filming, which is a big no-no when breeding tarantulas. So I did open up an opportunity for her to grab him at this point. But also let's take a look at the fact that he's going down inside of her burrow. And since he's going down inside, I do not have access to him. I cannot really fit a brush down there or tongs and intervene if something happens. So at this point, it's really up to him to turn and run. 
Now, maybe some people would argue that I could have removed them and bred them in a separate tank. This could have given me access to prevent anything from going wrong. He went down inside of one of her burrow entrances and he's webbing, turning around. I don't think she's there yet. I'm not sure. I can't really see what he's doing. But he has turned around in complete circles. You can see his little um, butt fingers or his little spoiler. So he could be in the middle with her, but I cannot tell exactly. Either way, he felt comfortable turning a complete circle a couple seconds ago. I don't know if he's digging his way in, because he didn't realize there were other entrances. He's a determined little guy. I tried pairing them a few weeks ago, and uh, then I decided that she needed to molt, because as he was trying to dig down into her burrow, she was underneath webbing it up. It was the cutest thing. Clearly, she didn't want him coming in. So there he is. He's turned around again and he's webbing again. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. So there he is, webbing all around. And he's also vibrating. He's so tiny. Let's talk about this pairing. And I really um, encourage you to leave some comments for me and uh, I will answer those and maybe we can discuss this further. If you have any questions, I will uh, do my best to answer those. This pairing, um, at the point that this video cut off, uh, I just waited because he went down inside the burrow and he disappeared. Now, if you notice in the video where it looks like he's turning around and he might be doing some webbing. Now, right before that, it looks like he was holding her legs up and holding her fangs back. And it looks like he may have insert done it. he may have completed insertion looking back on that and examining it closer up it looks like a breeding occurred but i could not be a hundred percent sure so i wasn't able to tell my my friend shane that i witnessed insertion several minutes went by he was down in the burrow completely disappeared i couldn't see him at all and I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to have what we would call faith. And I'm going to think maybe he will come back out. And maybe they need this privacy. This is what's happening. And it's natural. And all of these things were going through my head. But then I got nervous at a certain point And I, I just knew that I needed to check on him. So I dug down into the substrate and he was nowhere to be found. He was not in any of the tubes where he would have been in her territory, in her immediate territory, but there she was just sitting there. And so I tore some more of the little tubes apart, veering off to the right, and there he was. And he was in Death Girl. She was not consuming him. Maybe I interrupted it, I don't know but he had a very small wet spot on his thorax right next to where his legs connect to his body. And I knew at that point that she had bitten him, whether or not she was in the process of beginning to consume him when I interrupted, I will never know. But the little guy was twitching slightly and within half an hour, he was not moving at all and I 
I put him in his enclosure and I thought maybe he'll be okay, but I just knew that he wasn't going to be okay. So this is my experience losing my first male, not even my male, male belonging to my friend Shane. And he was the cutest little guy, as you can see. So at this point, I thought, you know, maybe I'm anthropomorphizing too much. Perhaps in the wild, you know, there's a much higher rate of them being eaten. So this really sparked a lot of curiosity on my part, and I began interviewing and talking to several experienced breeders in the hobby. Now, I have a whole bunch of information that I've gathered and I'm going to be going through, and I'm going to have a video that talks about breeding, some statistics, and certain breeds or certain species of tarantula genus and species that are more likely to cannibalize. I'm going to talk about prevention and I'm going to talk about the various theories that are out there. And so I want to be able to give you a good overview based on anonymous information from breeders with some footage that they've provided and I will credit the different sources for that. Now this video should be coming out, I would say within the next two months, May, maybe sooner. I will go ahead and I'll let you know as it gets closer, but I am working on that right now. Now, once again, please leave comments, let me know what you think, and I will be happy to discuss this with you. I hope this video will help you if you decide to breed Seriocosmus elegance in the future. So this is Tarantulas with Shanti. Uh, I am signing off for now.